Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can implement a stack using a linked list. So to get started, we're going to create two classes. The first class is more of a helper class. So we're going to create a class called node. And if you work with linked list before, you know, a node essentially has two main components. It has the data and the data can be whatever you want. In our case, we're going to make it an int and it has a pointer to the next node. Now here you can see that we have our one argument constructor. We pass in our data, we set our data, and then we set next equal to null. Now, if you want to make data and the next pointer private and then use getters and setters, you're more than welcome to do that. But to make this example as simplistic as possible, we're going to make everything public. Now from here, we're going to go to our main class. So I called it stack linked list implementation. We have a private data member called top and top is always going to point to the top of the stack. So remember our push and pop method both deal with the top of the stack. When I push something, I'm pushing it on top of the stack. And when I pop something, I'm removing from the top of the stack. Next, we're going to head down to our no argument constructor, and we're just going to set top equal to null. And that just means that our stack is empty. So now let's move on to the push method. So the push method is going to take in data. And with that data, we're going to create a new node that's going to be inserted at the top of the stack. So first we need to check to see whether or not the stack is empty. So remember in our no argument constructor, top was initially set to null and that signified that it was empty. So if the top is equal to null, that means top is going to be pointing to N. So N would be the top of the stack. Otherwise, what we're going to do is have N arrow next point to top and then top is going to point to N. So let's take a look at this in action. Let's say I want to push one on top of the stack. So one gets passed in as the data and we use that data to create our node that we want to insert on top of the stack. So we check to see if top is equal to null. So top is equal to null in this case. And then we assign that top is going to point to N. So N is effectively on top of the stack. Now let's give another example. Let's say I was to push two on top of the stack. Same thing, two gets passed in to push. We create a node based on the data that was passed in. First, we check to see if our stack is empty. It's not empty. Now we move on to the else condition. Then we say n arrow next is gonna point to the top of the stack. And then we're gonna have top point to n. So now let's move on to the pot method. So the first thing we need to do is to check to see whether or not the stack is empty or not. And you will remember from our no argument constructor, we initialize top and set it equal to null. So first we need to check if top is equal to null. All we're going to do is print out that the stack is empty and then we're going to return minus one. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to save the data from the top of the stack. Next, what we're going to do is have a temporary pointer to the top of the stack. And we need this temporary pointer because whenever we dynamically create a node, we're going to have to call the delete method on it. Now we're going to have to advance what top is pointing to since top is being popped off. So we're just going to say top is going to be equal to top arrow next. Then we finally delete the previous top of the stack and then we return the data that was on top of the stack. So now let's take a look at the pop method in action. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see whether top is equal to null or not. So in this case, it's not. So now we move on to the else condition. First, we need to save whatever data is at the top node. So in this case, it's going to be two. Next, we're going to create a temporary pointer that points to the top of the stack. Then we're going to advance what top is pointing to, to the next in line. And that's going to be our new top. Once we pop the old top from our stack, then we delete temp, which was a pointer to the previous top of the stack. And then we return temp data, which is just two. So now let's give another example with pop. So if I was to call the pop method one more time, 
is top equal to null? It's not, so we skip the if condition, go down to the else condition. First, we save whatever's on top of the stack. In this case, that will be one. Then we create a temporary pointer that points to the top of the stack. And then we advance what top is pointing to, to the next in line. In this case, one is our only node within our stack. So that is gonna be set to null. Then we're gonna delete temp, which was the node that was on top of the stack previously. And then we return whatever's at temp data, which in this case would be one. And last but not least, we're gonna need a destructor. And that's because we dynamically create each node that we insert on top of the stack. And this destructor is essentially the same as the singly linked list destructor. So I already went over that in my singly linked list destructor. So if you wanna take a look at how that works, you could take a look at that video. So that pretty much wraps it up for our stacked linked list implementation.